This is the CNC machine. Over here you've got your basic operator controls, e-stop, cycle start, feed hold, uh, feed rate override, spindle override, and our jogging joysticks, and then a device called a manual pulse generator which allows you to take very fine stepping increments on any given axes. Over on the Z axes, the Z being the up and down axes, you can see a number of different components in here. This would be the main spindle drive for the main spindle motor. It's a 24 volt servo motor, doesn't have encoders on it, but it works out real well to power the spindle. I run that through this gear system, uh, it doubles the speed of the spindle, or the motor, and it has enough torque where I can get away with that going into a shop built uh, spindle. All told it runs at about 14,000 RPM. I'm currently using a gear drive system. I eventually I'll switch that over to a belt drive system. But the spindle itself holds the small 1 8 inch shank tools that are common with all of the uh, circuit board drilling type uh, tools and so forth. Now this air cylinder here pushes this lever, pushes down on this uh, draw bar which compresses these springs, they're called Belleville washers, and then that releases the collet. And I'll do that right now. That released the collet. Now I can easily change out from one tool to the next. With this type of system it'll be very easy for me to incorporate an automatic tool changer as time allows. Now up front here you'll see another thing that sort of looks like a spindle. It's just a special cartridge to hold an old-fashioned uh, ballpoint plotter pen. These are very old ones from an old facet plotter. Um, I just turned up a little cartridge to hold the pen. Inside here is a spring, and then this is a tensioning knob right here. When I want to do plotting, I just loosen this Allen screw, drop it down, set it on top of the paper, tighten up the screw, and I'm good to go for a spring-loaded pen plotter. Over here on the side of the Z-axis, you'll notice a cable coming in with a series of wires. What I've got is a small uh, micro-acting or a snap-acting limit switch with trip dogs on this aluminum housing back here. This aluminum housing also houses a linear encoder, a quadrature encoder type scale, a linear scale. It's a half thousandths resolution, and this is the pickup head right here. All three axes have these linear scales on them. That assures me that I'm getting into the exact position that I want to be at and not relying on the stepper motors. So this is a closed loop system even though it's using stepper motors for the drive system. The Z axis uses a ball screw. It's connected to the stepper motor over here with a belt. Uh, it's a one to one ratio. Pulley comes over here, thrust bearing in there, ball nut there, and then the ball screw there. I used the ball screw for the Z-axis specifically because I needed to drive the load. Uh, we've got a lot of weight here and going with a straight up belt drive system I would have needed to add a counterweight to deal with the excess weight that's on the Z-axis. For X and Y axes you're only overcoming the inertia of the mass. You don't have to also fight gravity. So on the X and Y axis I could get away with a belt drive system. Over in this area you're looking at the X-axis stepper motor. Now on the stepper motors and drive system for the X and Y axes, I use a complete belt drive system. I step down the rotational speed of the motor through a series of pulleys. So we go from a small pulley on the motor to a large pulley on an idler shaft, and then down here is a smaller pulley which then connects to the uh, belt clamp which then drives the axes back and forth. The whole machine is constructed out of aluminum, either flat sheet stock or uh, 8020 extruded aluminum. And this is great material to work with if you've got a small machine shop at home. Uh, the linear rails that I've used on all three axes are of various brands, uh, Eco, NSK, and so forth. Uh, they're all eBay finds, probably pulls off of used automation equipment, but they work great for a small machine like this and sometimes you can pick up a pretty good buy on eBay. For stepper drives I'm using a very basic drive from uh, Gecko Drives. I believe these are the model G250 or G251. It's just a very small uh, stepper drive, perfect for this size this machine. This black cube back here used to be what was called a cube web server. I uh, used that about 10-15 years ago. I hacked apart the case to stuff all my transformers in there. This provides me with 35 volts, 24 volts, 12 volts, and 5 volts supplies for all the different accessories on the machine. 